Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Brandon Chavis. I already had an awesome introduction here. Um, but I'm a solutions architect uh, for AWS, and I work with our container partners in the ecosystem, uh, but also with a lot of our customers that run containers on AWS. And so we're seeing kind of like two major trends in those who are using containers on AWS. Number one is kind of obvious. It's like the startups, the born in the cloud companies that already have those application architectures that are um, able to take advantage of the cloud and containers, those cloud native architectures. But number two is actually uh, more prevalent in that we're seeing large enterprises of all shapes and sizes, like Ticketmaster, for example, um, that are seeing containers as a way to um, kind of be a catalyst for moving to the cloud. So they might be along kind of like a continuum uh, to moving to the cloud, and that might be, you know, they might be building their new applications in a cloud-native way with containers, um, distributed applications, but they might also see that there's the ability for them to make investments in their existing monolithic uh, legacy applications and get benefits right away by moving to containers. And they can either get those benefits by running on-premise, or they can move them to the cloud and improve agility in general. Um, so one thing that a lot of these customers have in common, though, is that they're looking for an orchestration platform to help them ease the transition of moving to the cloud because there's a lot to think about, right? So more and more commonly, we see Kubernetes being one of the choices that customers are using. Um, and it's great to see uh, partners like CoreOS make the investments up front to help customers do that in a really seamless way. Um, a lot of these customers, though, are using AWS. Um, for a number of reasons, right? So a quick pitch on AWS. Um, we think customers have selected AWS for many years uh, because we've really proven ourselves committed to your success. So number one, we have experience. We've been running a cloud since 2006, and there's no compression algorithm for experience. So we've seen all the pitfalls of running at an enormous scale. We've seen the challenges you can have, uh, and we've architected our services internally in a way that can ensure that you have the uptime and the reliability that you need. Um, we also have a service breadth and depth um, that can basically solve for any cloud workload. So uh, 70 plus services, as you know, it's growing uh, every year dramatically around the time of reInvent. Um, and our pace of innovation uh, is really staggering. I've been working at AWS for about four years and it's become impossible to keep up. I think we said uh, in 2016 we released uh, over a thousand new features. So if you think about that, any given day you could wake up and see three new services or features. Um, so it's really just pushing this ball of knowledge up a hill forever, and I'll never actually get there, never catch up. Um, we also have a global footprint, which means that we can allow you to run your workloads in a place that's close to your customers. And then as we grow, as we scale, we might make these little efficiency gains. We might save a few cents an hour in terms of like a cooling strategy that we've implemented. We might have more efficient servers. And we take these efficiency gains and we roll them into price reductions for our customers. So to this date, we've had 58 proactive price reductions. So you can continue to run your applications in a more cost-effective way at AWS. And then a very important thing here to talk about is our partner ecosystem. Um, so the ecosystem is here to help you take advantage of the AWS platform um, and all of these attributes, right? So CoreOS has been working um, to bring you guys a Kubernetes distribution um, that helps customers take advantage of the AWS cloud. So to put these attributes more in context, um, this is from James Hamilton's talk at reInvent last year. I could e easily swap this out with the Ticketmaster slide that shows when they launch new tickets. Um, but really nothing kind of wraps up the attributes of the cloud, the real advantages of AWS here, uh, like this slide. This is Prime Day 2016. Um, and this spike here on the, on the right-hand side is basically somewhere in the range of 10,000 new servers, or tens of thousands of servers, rather, um, coming online in response to real-time load fluctuations. Um, so this is a pretty reasonably sized data center, if you think about it. Tens of thousands of servers is like a data center. It's coming online in response to actual business needs. Um, this is really, really powerful, and this allows companies to be agile, and the same sort of flexibility allows you to test things out without investing in all this hardware up front, um, and you can just in, uh, launch uh, infrastructure when your business demands it. The cost savings can be incredible as well because you can respond to these spikes in load, you can terminate those instances when you no longer need them, and you can save the money. And our friends at CoreOS here are really putting in the work to help you take advantage of this scale up front built into the Tectonic platform. So we work with global enterprises. Our customers are across the entire world. And we keep bringing on new infrastructure, new regions to allow you to get your infrastructure closer to your customers and ensure your customers can have the best experience possible. 
So uh, we've added new regions this year. We've added Montreal, we've added Ohio. We recently announced London. Uh, we announced Paris, those are coming in 2017. Um, and something about these regions, all of these are multiple availability zone regions. We do not build regions with, with just a single AZ. That wouldn't offer our customers the level of reliability they demand from us. So an availability zone is multiple distinct data centers. And so an AZ has these data centers distributed in a way that ensures that they uh, can survive different types of faults. So we will build these AZs across um, distinct floodplains on multiple different power grids, essentially to ensure that you won't lose multiple data centers in an AZ um, due to a single type of event. And then our partner ecosystem, growing every day. We have thousands of partners. Um, and the idea here is that all these partners are working to solve problems for our customers, right? So we as a platform can better solve problems for you. You can take one of these building blocks off the shelf, um, and you can be sure that this is architected in a way um, that takes advantage of the attributes of, of the AWS platform. Tectonic is a great example of this, and they put in the work up front to make sure that um, things are architected with a bunch of AWS best practice, common sense, uh, and you don't have to do all the heavy lifting on your own. You don't have to worry about necessarily, uh, you know, how do I um, plug Kubernetes into all the different components on AWS that might help me out. So one way you can leverage this experience is through Kube AWS, right? So this is one of the tools that uh, CoreOS Core have built to allow you to deploy Kubernetes to AWS. So at its core, this is basically a templating engine. Um, this allows you to populate a config value or a config file full of some values that specify things like what's my DNS configuration, uh, what secret should I use uh, to use uh, AWS KMS on the back end, um, what region should I be running on, et cetera, et cetera. And then Kube AWS will actually take this config file, it'll inject it into CloudFormation, and it uses CloudFormation then to spin up all of the resources, spin up your Kubernetes cluster, spin up your underlying AWS resources, and then manage it continuously. And so that's great because CloudFormation is an enterprise-grade infrastructure as code tool, and we see many customers using it to manage their infrastructure. Um, but it also does some great things like plug Kubernetes into elastic load balancing. It'll store your secrets in AWS KMS. Um, it'll allow you to take advantage of IAM roles and make sure that um, your nodes can only reach the AWS services that you want them to be able to reach, so your permissions are scoped appropriately. So all of this common sense is just built in right out of the box, and so when you run Kube AWS, you can bring up a cluster um, with all this uh, right out of the box. And then finally, enterprise level um, tectonic. So this wraps up all the experience that CoreOS have gained through using Core, uh, Kube AWS. Um, and it applies it to an enterprise uh, installation of, uh, of tectonic. So this is a production ready install. So right out of the box, uh, you get all this AWS best practice and this Kubernetes best practice kind of melded together and just uh, deployed in a multi-AZ, high availability, um, self-hosted Kubernetes installation. You get some other nice features like managed backups uh, and restore of Kubernetes clusters to Amazon S3. And then finally, managed upgrades. This also includes the core update functionality, so you can do rolling upgrades of your clusters across AWS. And so the core message here is that by using Tectonic on AWS, you don't have to go through the struggles that for example, Ticketmaster went through early on, trying to understand the whole of the AWS platform, which components are important to me, which ones do I have to tie into Kubernetes, which ones do I not need? And a lot of that legwork is done up front because of the work we've done with CoreOS to ensure that it works well on the platform. Uh, and that is it for me. Thank you.